Hi, my name is Nick Danielson. Uh, I'm with the University of Northern Iowa. Uh, I've been here four seasons, going on season five now. Uh, I've coached the tight ends here for the last four years and actually be transitioning to running backs uh, going into this season in 2019. Going into today, we'll talk a little bit uh, some of the tight end blocking progression that I've gone through both out of a fitted and into a three-point stance and as well as a two-point stance. Always start, the first drill we do going into blocking first day of fall camp as we go in is our fitted finish. So what we're actually doing is I set these guys up, okay, and they are already, they're in just a slight stagger, if not almost a balanced stance, and their hands tighten inside the framework. What we're simulating is we've already gotten our two steps into the ground, we've come out of our three-point stance, and we've already punched and actually struck the defender. What we're really trying to focus on is rolling our hips through contact. What I don't want our kids to do is punch and lift in two separate motions, but I want a punch and a roll as we drive our feet through. So I'll actually set up, okay, and I'll give a, I'll give a set hit or a whistle, whatever your command is, and I will actually emphasize I'm striking and extending and locking my arms while I roll those hips. And I'm trying to put my belt buckle on the defender's belt buckle. This should give a nice arch into my lower back and actually lift that defender, what we call up and out of his socks. You get him lifted up and out of his socks and back on his heels so now I can run and accelerate off my insteps. I'll give a finish whistle and that finish whistle, I want them finishing violent and out, okay? Out and up, throwing that defender out and up and then we'll actually chase after him in a later drill. But I'm setting them up, I'm simulating, I'll even get behind these kids and what I'm doing is I'm putting my hand right in their lower back and on my or on my whistle to start it out, I will physically roll their hips for them. So I'll grab and I'll push down on their tail, or I'm sorry, on their lower back and roll up and under their tailbone and vault their hips to put that belt buckle up on that defender's belt buckle and then run my feet. All I'm trying to simulate is that lifted vertical finish versus just pushing out and bending at that hip where I'm bent over with my chest over the ground, but actually lifting those hips and rolling my hips up and underneath the defender to finish up and out versus just out. I'll take these kids then after we go through there and we'll work on our shoot finishes. So I'll line them up, different angles. Okay, we'll do straight ahead angled and then we'll do our wide angle for a wide zone. But we'll, depending on what play we're working on, we'll line them up and now I'm doing the same thing. So the fitted finish earlier, I'm simulating this position right here. Now we're just working on coming in from an actual three point stance where I'm shooting my feet and I should be striking actually and engaging the defender on that second step. So as I land that second step in the ground, right here, those hands should now engage. And as those hands engage, I'll actually punch and lift. And now you'll see my belt buckle start to engage the defender so I can roll out. You'll see from an angle here, the alignment of this defender is very important. Okay, a lot of guys will push guys way to the, fr the front of the shoe. So a lot of the block is actually through the shoe underneath that. I put the defender at the back and we put our offensive player in the shoe so that the point of engagement right here is just as we leave the shoot, so there's actually room to roll my hips and lift up and out. If you do this too far back, you're banging your head. And a lot of guys put the shoot for a reason to stay low, but to block at this level throughout an entire block is a little bit unrealistic. So we bump our guys back a little bit so that they have room to actually unlock their hips and lift that defender out and up once we've cleared the shoot. So same thing. Now we really want to work on our tight hands. Okay, we want our hands tight and inside. If we miss, we work a replace drill where you're constantly swiping and replacing that hand back into the framework. But you'll notice a common trend as I go through here. I've got a violent hip snap, just almost like a power clean. Right here, this motion right there should be as if you're cleaning weight off the ground and I'm throwing my hips up and underneath the bar. So then from this angle, you see I had that defender just on the edge. Ideally, okay, not a good clip exactly, but I want that kid's screws of his helmet right up against this bar that way as i come through this block i'm keeping my pad level low to the engage point but then on the engage point i've got room to roll those hips and i'll put my belt buckle onto his so i have space to actually lift and finish vertically up and out of this block we're trying to simulate us chasing him replacing his toes okay our toes should replace his i'm flying my feet i'm not a big take a hundred steps kind of guy i want these guys running off the ball as hard as they can Violent hands fit and finish up and through. So same thing, you can see there should be a head snap on this defender as I fit, and you can see the hip roll. There's my fitted finish, and there's the hips underneath. So when I was with those players earlier in the drill, I was putting my hand right here on their lower back, and I was forcing those hips to roll and lift up and out of the defender. What it allows you to do is get them on their heels and run so you can actually finish up and over the top. 
So taking to some game clips a little bit. Now we're going to watch the tight end number 85 here on the right. There's our two steps with our engage. Okay. And now as we engage, you can see my hips actually roll up and underneath and I'm constantly trying to put my belt on his. So as the defender jumps out to our right, I adjust laterally and I'm still trying to put my belt out on his, which allows me to maintain contact and actually stay close to the defender. If I'm bending over and I don't get my hips under me and I'm bent over at that waist, now the defender is far from my framework and I don't have the ability to get up and in tight and to be honest, grab a hold of cloth. If you're bent at the waist grabbing a hold of cloth, you would call for holding, you get your hips and framework up underneath his and you can get in and get a good secure grab on the interior pad of that defender. So same thing watching the tight end number 85 over here on the left. I have to take more of a lateral step on this scheme to get squared up. And now I'm into my hip roll chasing after the defender. You can see even through here as the defender tries to spin out, those hips are locked in and I'm body on body running my feet trying to replace his toes with mine. Same thing watching tight end here on the right hand side. I get my one, two. One, two, there my hands engage on my second step, and you can see my hips roll, my toes are chasing his toes, and I actually finish, I've locked out, and I'm lifting the defender versus just pushing the defender. Right here is where we've cleared the shoot in our drill, and now you're lifting up and out, and I'm finishing vertically, and as long as my toes are flying to replace his toes, I can finish out and over the top. I hope you enjoyed this video clinic. Please subscribe to InstaClinic so that you stay connected to this one-of-a-kind football resource.